Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Out and About on Think Tech Live streaming network series. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted you're joining us today, where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization I might be affiliated with. Joining me today in the studio is Buffy Cushman Pates, school leader of SEEKS, the School for Examin uh, Examining Essential Questions of Sustainability. That's a mouthful, but uh, with that, I would like to welcome you to the show today, Buffy. Thank you. Yes, Thanks so, for having me. Well, you know, it's uh, an interesting school. I have actually met students who uh, have gone to SEEKS. Yeah. One of them was uh, actually my neighbor across mm -hmm. the street, and his mother was a very interesting lady, and she's a scientist, and she wanted to enroll her child in a different type of school, and so we were talking, and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I've heard about this school <laughs> before. So tell us, what is SEEKS? Well, it's a public charter middle school, and there's a lot of pieces to that. It's a public school, it's a charter school, and it's a middle school, which is to say we serve students in sixth through eighth grade. Um, any student who wants to go, really, and if we have uh, more, more students interested than we have space available, we have to hold a lottery. You have to hold a lottery. You have to hold a lottery. Yes, there's no admissions criteria, no tuition. We are a public school in that sense. Yeah. So you don't obviously. For those of us who may not be familiar with it, what is a charter yeah, school? Yeah, it's a really good question. So. For what it's worth, there's a Think Tech episode on me speaking about what a charter school is. Okay. <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, but a, basically, a charter school is a public school of choice, is the way I like to think about it. So uh, students have to still take the standardized tests and are ultimately driven by common core standards. We accept all students, there's, there's no admissions criteria. In those ways, it's a public school. A charter school means that you have the freedom and flexibility to choose the curriculum. So even though we're still driven by common core standards and our students still take the state tests, everything that happens in the middle is really up to us. So that's why parents get, might choose our school because they like, for example, our schedule, how we spend our time and our day, or our project-based approach or our community-based approach. You can really have a focus in your school and ours is examining essential questions of sustainability. It's the Exam big picture. Examining essential questions of sustainability. Yeah. So those are three uh, big words that yep. have variable meanings, yes. especially in a environment now where uh, even the EPA is, you know, gutting sort of science-based um, understanding, and so how does that factor into what you all do? Do you, uh, you do you teach science by, or do you teach sustain sustainability? How do you approach what is sustainability and so, what's essential? I'm going to say what like teaching is kind of people have a impression of teaching as adults or people sharing content saying like I have this content let me give this content to you and instead our approach is investigations mm -hmm. and examination so it's content 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 let's look at it let's evaluate multiple perspectives let's think about how these things are all systemically like interact with each other and we really want to give students exposure to a whole wide range of uh, experiences and perspectives and let them try and understand how it all works together. Of course we try and guide them, but we're not a school where we're brainwashing or trying to put a particular like way of thinking in students. We're really trying to help them examine things that are so essential questions or mm -hmm. things that really matter. You know, what are the things that really matter? There is actually it is an educational term also, essential questions. Okay. And that means it can be approached through lots of different lenses. You can approach it through lots of different subject areas. You can examine it again and again and get different answer every time. Mm -hmm. So these are things that define an essential question in sort of edu speak. Mm -hmm. And that's how we approach it too. So some examples of essential questions of sustainability. Um, one right now is um, how can we learn from our past to better prepare for our future? Another is simply how do we care for our ahupua? And then the third one that our, our students are examining right now is um, what does it take to feed our community? So you can see how like robust these are, and you can approach them from lots of different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. So a sixth grader looking at how do we how do we feed our community? Yeah. So you're looking at all kinds of things from 
growing our own food right. to importing food exactly. to what happens if there's a, a hurricane that wipes out the, yep. the port. Yep, and helping them understand how all these things are so related to each other and how we have these dependencies and how we need to sort of build our own understanding of how food systems work. Our students have grown an amazing amount of food on our campus this year and their goal at the end their project that they're all working towards at the end of the year in this group is uh, to put on a dinner for 200 people wow. where they have produced all of the food themselves so they went as far as to uh, create a field from what used to be a dirt parking lot and like enrich the soil grow corn and beans and squash and that corn has now been harvested and dried and turned into cornmeal that they're turning into tortillas it's, wow. it blows my mind that's awesome it's really amazing I believe the student you know is actually in that group okay so yeah. and, and these these students then do do you find that it's that the students actually say you know I really am not excited about going to school and then they go to their parents and say is there something else or is it the parents who are just, choosing our school yeah how do they find out about it word of mouth is typically how students find out about it and, and <laughs> parents I would say I, would, I think more than half of the students are going to our school because their parents want to go to our school. <laughs> but ultimately, it's parents that are, you know, it, it's age appropriate that parents of 10 and 11 year olds, which is when, you know, this decision is being made about middle school, it's age appropriate that parents are looking for schools of choice for their kids at that point. Um, and, and parents have a sense of what they want for their, for their kid. People choose our school for all kinds of reasons. Some people choose it because it's a smaller school. You know, most middle schools are on the order of four to 800 students, and our school has 180 students. We don't necessarily have small classes, but we have small school, so that makes for a nice community feel. Some people choose it because of the sustainability. Some people choose it because it's project-based. Some people choose it because it's convenient. <laughs> We're, we're in Kaimuki. We're on the campus of Kaimuki High School. You're on the campus of Kaimuki yeah, High School. Yeah, we share. We share with Kaimuki High School, yeah. What is their enrollment, just by comparison? Um, I think they're at about seven, a little over 700 this year, between 700 and 750. Um, it's a big campus, though. There's room for all of us. There, it is a big campus. It's a huge campus. And so, obviously, yours is a middle school right, right now. Yeah. And what are the plans for the future? Or are you happy just to stay at a middle school? Our, our vision is to grow into a 6th through 12th grade school, but it's all a matter of... Um, facilities dependency and so what's topic for another time okay and so you said 180 students so you've got about uh, is it equally divided between the grades of yeah six seventh and eighth about 60 students per grade level that's our model yeah uh, it's a, so how does one go about starting a charter school can I start a charter school uh, that wants to focus on I, I know, painting and drawing or uh, you could try okay yeah I mean it's it's, it's an incredibly rigorous application process through the uh, Hawaii State Public Charter Commission and they have an application cycle that opens up every year it's about a I think the process the, the application cycle is about six months and then there's you get approved or not approved it's a pretty hard it's pretty hard to get approved pretty hard to get approved. <laughs> oh, yeah, how long did it hard. take you from conception to actually opening your doors for students uh, less time than it should have ultimately they have actually changed the process in the time since we did it for us it was we were approved in December and we opened our doors in August of the following year which is grease lightning speed it for was anything it was crazy crazy quick but uh, they've changed the process since then so now it's an 18 month window between when you're approved and when you open and we didn't have to do it that fast we wanted to do it that fast mm -hmm. we had the idea we were ready to do it we were able to pull all the pieces together including facilities is the biggest challenge yep. facilities because charter schools are not provided a facility unless they're a conversion charter but most charter schools are a startup which means they originate with an idea and that idea gets approved and then they have to go find the facility. And so, do you end up paying like rent to come? We did. School? We paid rent for the first four years of our of our school. And now that we're coexisting, we're in a we're in a MOU relationship with um, the DOE right now for okay. for our part, our small part of the Kamuki High School campus. Okay, so your funding is primarily through our funding is directly through per pupil. So we get funding directly from the state of Hawaii, well, from the state of Hawaii to the Public Charter School Commission, mm -hmm. and then they give it to each of the charter schools based on their enrollment. And so we have to tell them our enrollment predictions in advance. We get around seven thousand three hundred per student to run our school. We pay for our curriculum, all of our teachers, our facility, and all the things that it takes to run a school. All the, all the operations. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. It's not it's not quite enough. Uh, facilities makes a really big difference because if you end up spending a lot of money on rent 
then that makes a really big dent in your overall school budget. And then things like school lunch and um, that kind of thing. And then you use, do you use the same facilities for lunch and things like that at, at the Kaimuki High School? Right now we do, yeah. That's one of the really advantageous things about this partnership is that we were able to access some things that we hadn't previously been able to access, including a school lunch program, including some athletic facilities that, um, mm -hmm. you know, just fields. We're just able to play on the fields, which we'd like to play. Absolutely. Yeah. That, and how many teachers do you have at the school now? Uh, we have about 15 full-time teachers from, uh, with Two English, two math, two science, two social studies, um, three arts, te three arts teachers, arts and electives teachers, and then uh, three special educators. Okay, so you do have special educators. Absolutely, okay. yes, and that's part of what it means to be a public school. So we accept all students. Our full, our specific model for special education is full inclusion. So it's students whose IEPs. And this is really technical speak here, but whose IEPs can be met in the general education environment with support. IUP is okay. IEP is an individualized education plan. Okay, and you mentioned the Common Core. I think that probably people my age, they don't know what the Common Core is. What is the Common, common Core? Common Core is a set of standards that describe what students should know and be able to do. It's as simple as that, although it mm -hmm. kind of gets a little bit of a, a reputation as though there's a curriculum to go with it or something like that. But ultimately, Common Core is a set of standards that a lot of states, I think, 35 or 40 states have adopted yeah. that say in English, in these grades, your goals should be that students should be able to, for example, make a claim and support it with evidence. In math, it's that they should be able to make a quantitative claim and support it with quantitative evidence. Those kinds of standards. Does it mean that the, that students should be able to figure out, for example, algebra or geometry by a certain grade? Yes, yeah, those are, those are included in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And is, is that what we hear about? The, taking the test or, or teaching to the well, test and we hear we hear that uh, uh, thrown around yeah you do and so the the test and the standards are not the same thing the test mm -hmm. is ideally the test tests on the standards uh, but doesn't always mm -hmm. um, but you know we, you can get some information about how the tests work and you know if they're multiple choice the tests have changed a lot over the last five years I, I don't want to say I'm an advocate for testing for yeah. lots of testing I'm yeah. not it's yeah. just part of our reality and yeah. we think of it as our students doing well in our standardized test is one measure of many measures yes. of our students it's not the ultimate one ultimately our measure is we're trying to create students who are stewards of planet earth yeah. and healthy effective citizens of the world Sounds very lofty goal. It does sound lofty goal, but it's what we need. It is it's exactly what, what we needs. need. So you say, say that again, that you would create, your goal so is to create. Our students are stewards of planet Earth. Stewards of planet Earth. And healthy, effective citizens of the world. Yes. And I think really an important part of that healthy is happy, especially in the middle school years. Healthiness, like being healthy, involves also being happy, at least not hating school. Yeah. Thinking that school is some place that you want to go on a, on a daily basis because you're getting something from it and you're life that you're living right now is worth something, not just preparation for your long-term future. Wow, what, a, what an amazing uh, environment these kids uh, get to uh, be in and learn in, and, and just a totally different way of looking at, at education and learning, because it's really about putting the, the emphasis on the learner yes. And, yes. And, and letting her or him decide. Yes the best way to yes. learn and, and working inside of the, I, right. the IEP for that. And do you, do you teach some of the, the, the courses yourself or are oh, you just I busy administering? I wish. And how, how old is the school at this point? The school is in its fifth year. This is its fifth year right now we're finishing. 2017, 2018 school year is our fifth year. We opened in 2013. Okay, well, uh, we're going to take a very quick break, but I am uh, talking today with uh, Buffy Cushman Pates, who is the school leader of SEEKS, the school for examining essential questions of sustainability. And we are on Think Tech Live Network streaming series. We'll be back in just a moment. Do you want to be cool? me if so watch my show on tuesdays at one called out of the comfort zone i sang this song to you because i think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool and i want you to come watch my show where i bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier happier build better relationships and make your life a success so come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there.
Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. But did you have a baby? Yeah, I, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch and we are live. <laughs> this is Out and About on Think Tech live streaming network series talking with Buffy Cushman Pates, the school leader of SEEKS, the school for examining essential questions of sustainability. So we have a very interesting charter school here that you started five years ago. You got 180 kids. It's grades six through eight. Right. You got about 15 teachers and mm -hmm. um, have a very interesting approach to learning. You're, you receive money from the state from me, from the taxpayers, <laughs> yes, right? that's right. And uh, it sounds like just not enough to, to really do what you need to do, but you make do with what we you've got. Work. And do you have other additional sources of funding? You have fundraisers? We do fundraising, yes. Okay. We do fundraising, we do grant writing, and those, those things help a lot, especially in terms of sort of visioning for the future or building a new project and new programs and systems. When you were looking at, at developing the school, yeah. What were your models? Is there some curriculum on the, the mainland or maybe in Finland or um, somewhere else? Uh, yeah, there's good stuff happening all over the place for sure. So we, you know, I, I did a year where I was a something called an Einstein Fellow. I got a really, in Washington, D.C., got exposure to a lot of different best practices in teaching, good teachers, and then national programs um, that were happening. Also, school programs in the D.C. area. Following year, I spent a year in graduate school at Harvard Graduate School of Education. Mm. Again, lots of exposure visiting schools and kind of seeing who's doing what and just picked the pieces as I loved and tried to put them all together into one school model. How long ago did you have this vision of starting a school like this? I mean, it's hard to know when, you know, a dream begins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think I've been thinking about starting a school for 10 or 12 years, um, but I didn't really have the confidence or feel like I had the collection of pieces I needed, mm -hmm. which is why I went to that school leadership program to try and make sure I had as much as I possibly could. You can never know everything by all means. <laughs> and what was your background right before you started the, the school? A teacher. Yes, I was a teacher. Yes, this all was born from my passion for teaching, mm -hmm. from my passion for helping kids learn yeah. <laughs> and, and, and be a part of the world in meaningful ways. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the school has that. And so I, we have a, a sample of your the weekly schedule that a student might um, look at here. So tell us what we're looking at here. Sure. What is this, this schedule? Sure. I'll, I'll talk you through it. So first, our teachers come a little earlier than our students, but you'll notice our student school day doesn't start till 830, which is a little later than most because we know a lot about teenage sleep patterns. Research tells us that teenagers don't wake up till later in the day. Yes. So we actually made this based on the idea of our school being both a middle and a high school someday. And um, we start with physical activity. So for the younger ones, it lets, gives them a chance to sort of get their get their oogies out when they need to run around first thing in the day. And the older students, it allows them to wake up. We start with physical activity on Mondays and Fridays. It's in our advisory groups, which is small groups of students and teachers who really have just like a, a family approach. Every day they greet each other, they do a sharing, and then they play together. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, their physical activity is something that's consistent for the quarter. They might choose to do yoga or gardening or soccer or ultimate frisbee. And those are physical activities where we have community volunteers come in and help lead those so that our teachers can co-participate with our students and everyone gets to be a learner together during that time. That's awesome. So you've got the students and the teachers taking yoga class together. Oh yeah. The yoga is popular. Yoga is, we use, this, this year we've had to have two yoga courses per uh, Tuesday, Thursday period. Or Tuesday, Thursday period, yeah. Gardening is, there's also a stream cleanup one happening this quarter. So the physical activity options change by the quarter and by who we have access to in terms of uh, community volunteers. We have a lot of parents that come in and help. That is so interesting. So I was going to ask you about volunteers. Yeah. So let's throw that in there right now. Sure. So you've got probably normal 
parents coming in yeah. to, to help with their their kids, but you might have some uh, yoga teachers or yep. some uh, maybe something else, some gardeners coming in. Yes, it like. and we have both of those things happening right now. But yeah, those are welcome. As we also, you know, we have slacklining as an option this year. I don't even know what that is. It's, it's <laughs> like imagine a low tight rope that's flatter than just a rope, oh, but it's like this. You've seen it in Kapolani Park. Yes, it's a balancing off. thing. Okay. I think it's only a foot off the ground. It's not very high, but it's surprisingly difficult. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> slacklining. Yes. So you've got your approach. I can just see to physical education is very different. Rather than everybody has to go out and pretend to catch the baseball or, or whatever that does not does not suit them. And so we don't. We even don't call it physical education. We call it physical activity. Mm -hmm. The purpose of it is just to wake your brain up. Do we know there's a lot of research about being outdoors, doing physical things, engaging different parts of your brain. That's the purpose of it is to engage your brain differently because then you've got blood flowing through your brain that really there's research that tells us about this. There is a running group, you know, there are, there's the opportunities, yeah, there's football, yeah. there's things for the different kinds of students and they get to choose. That's so great. So, and you know, when you're talking about questions of sustainability, you've got, you've got a, a river that flows right by right, the school the stream, property, yeah. mm -hmm. so the stream, so that you could actually, I mean, it, your heart gets pumping when you're picking up trash and debris and you're learning a lesson like, how does this stuff get in here? I'm sure they take it right back to the classroom. Speaking of that, how aware are your kids of stuff that's going on in the news? Are oh, they a lot? They're yes. very well. I think so. But can I can I finish telling you yep, about our yep, schedule? Because yep, yep. I only got so far, and, and it kind of helps answer your question. Okay, so, so we did we did some physical we, activity. We start with physical activity, first. and then after that, we have students in a typical day have three long blocks of content, and they're the same general things that students are learning in other schools. They have every student has a math class, an English class, class, a social studies, a science. All of our students also have an arts class and all of our students have an elective option. So electives might range from language lab to um, I think we call it school tools, uh, you know, more like a study hall to um, Attitude of Gratitude is one of our classes where students, it's a visual arts approach, it's a hands-on visual arts approach where they're trying to make things that express gratitude. Anyway, electives are hmm. cool, arts classes are cool, we have both performing arts and visual arts. But our more standard traditional subjects, English, math, science, social studies, those are also really quite rigorous based on common core standards again. And um, our teachers are really passionate about those subjects. That's what I look for first and foremost in hiring teachers, people that are really passionate about their subject. I, You asked me what I did before, I was a I'm trained as a geologist, but I was a middle school math and high school science teacher, and there is honestly not much I like more in the world better than helping students learn math, especially middle school students. And I really think that math is incredibly useful and powerful, and I want to hire other people that feel that way about their subjects. Okay, so t take a math class. How might you? How might the Sikh school approach it differently than? Um... We do investigations. So math classes are not about drill and kill, and math classes aren't about like here's how you, uh, you know, to divide fractions, you flip it and multiply, and you don't just mul you know memorize an algorithm and do it 27 times in a row. Yeah. In our class, we try and. In our classes, we do investigations to help students understand why you do something. And so they build their own understanding, usually through manipulatives and through sorting things out, lots of group work, lots of projects. And then, in a way, kind of develop the algorithms themselves, test it, and then they practice it. And so it's really about developing an understanding of the reasons behind the math based on a real world context. So it's not, you know, back when we did math, it was, here's how you do it, here's a bunch of easy pro you know, easy problems that get harder, and then here's some word problems, yeah. right? We approach it starting with the word with the word problem, you might say, mm -hmm. where it's, here's the real world application, let's use this to help us understand why and how, and then practice that. Would you say that when the, when the kids are in, in a math class, for example, and we all got a standard book, and then we'd mm -hmm. check it out and take it home, and like you said, we start with, the easy things. I always said, see Dick and Jane, see Spot, see Dick and Jane run, and then suddenly you're reading like theses in your graduate school, and you think we were tricked at the beginning. But if you <laughs> learn from the beginning, this is how you're going to use it. It's very useful. Do the kids learn from each other more? Do they learn from the teacher more? Do they learn from uh, themselves more, or is it just about uh, all of the above? And it depends on you know. It depends. It depends on the, on the on the subject. It depends on you know. So for an 
in math, for example, the teacher is a content expert, and sometimes you just need to say, like, how do I do this? Yeah. Help me with that. Yeah. But well, in our EQS block, which we haven't gotten to really, the, but the end of the day project-based block, that is everyone co-learning. Nobody knows all the stuff there is to know about sustainability. So they're learning from each other as much as they are from anyone else. Tell us about the EQS blocks, because so, you've got four of them in a week. That's right. I mean, it's the basic, I, I like to say it's three of the five letters in the name of our school, or even four of the five, for examining essential questions of sustainability. So the end of the day, students, 60 students, five teachers, all working together to examine an essential question of sustainability. I gave you some examples at the beginning of the program, but um, they examine it for a whole year. In the beginning, it's students kind of getting exposure to the various content disciplines and how you might apply those things in a project. So there's like a mini math project, a mini science project. Then the second, uh, the second phase we call it, so the rest of first semester, teachers have designed a project related to the essential question of sustainability that all the students work through together. And in that project, they incorporate English, math, science, history, mm. and arts, because they have all those teacher content experts working together to help design it. And then in third, in second semester, phase three we call it, which is what our students are now, they've already done a project, they've learned how to do project work in our school, and now student, and they've learned a lot of content related to the essential question of sustainability. So now our students are designing their own projects. So uh, for example, one of the, um, how do we care for our ahupua'a? What they did for their project that the teachers led them through is that all of the students worked together to create a coffee table book based on the humans of New York. So they interviewed lots of people. Wait, this is actually Ho'o Mana'o, the how do we learn from the past to better prepare for our future. Mm -hmm. They made a coffee table book where every student did a humans of New York style interview with someone in our Kaimuki area. Uh -huh, interesting. And, and, and then they presented those at our exhibitions of learning. So all EQSs end with exhibitions of learning. And now students are building off of what they learned from all of those interviews and all those community members. And it, they're designing their own projects. It sounds like a really interesting way for students to become engaged, yes. interested, yes. involved at, a, at something that's meaningful for them uh, with a lot of support from other like-minded students, really supportive learning environment for teachers in a real world environment where they can come out and, and bring in whatever's outside yeah. in and Sounds like a, just a fantastic uh, learning environment. How, where do we go to find more information on this? Seeks.org. You can learn a lot about us at seeks.org, S-E-E-Q-S.org. We do have our students have public exhibitions okay. at the end of each uh, semester. So that's a great way to kind of come see what our students have created, see how engaged they are. And when would that be? Um, I believe coming up on May 7th, I May think. May 7th? OK, so I might have, it's at seeks.org we can find it, S-E-E-Q-S. So, well, as always, we, this goes by so fast. We couldn't cover nearly enough of what I wanted to talk about, as always, but I really appreciate you coming down and at least giving us a, us a basic idea of, of what SEEKS is, and, and uh, so people can go to yeah. SEEKS.org to find out some more information about the school. And with that, I have to say we are out of time and have to wrap it up. I am Winston Welton. This is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. And it has been our delight to talk with Buffy Cushman Pates, school leader of SEEKS, the School for Examining Essential Questions of Sustainability, found at SEEKS, S E E Q S dot org. Thank you for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ian Davidson, our technical producer, Ray Sengelang, our floor manager, Robert McLean, and our intern floor uh, manager, uh, Brianna. Vides and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. I'll see you here every other Monday at 3 p.m. for more on Out and About Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, everyone.